On this episode of Geek Dad Life, we're going to review the new Masters of the Universe Origins Battle Cat by Mattel. Hi everyone, and welcome to Geek Dad Life. It's your host, Jay Glaffelter here. And today we're going to review the first beast from the new Masters of the Universe Origins line by Mattel. Last week, we reviewed the first two figures from this line, He-Man and Skeletor. And this week, we're going to review the first Beast figure from this new toy line. In that video, I shared my excitement about how Mattel is all in on this line. And the fact that we're already getting Beast in vehicles are proof of that. I plan on picking up just about every release from the Masters of the Universe Origins line, so be sure to hit like, hit subscribe, and click on that bell icon to be notified when the latest Masters of the Universe Origins review drops. Like I said earlier, this is the first beast from the Motu Origins line, and there's probably no better or more famous beast from the original Masters of the Universe toy line than Battle Cat. Not only was he an essential companion in the mini comics era of Motu, but he was also a fan favorite from the Filmation's cartoon. Much like the figures, this packaging evokes the feel of the original Battle Cat toy with new artwork that looks amazing on the front end, definitely calls back a lot of the features from that original packaging artwork. With the maskless battle cat kind of in full aggressive mode, you also have the little goblin at the, the helm of the lasers on top of Castle Grayskull, and then shadowy figures of some foes for He-Man to face, all pulled directly from that original card artwork. It also has some of the new features of the Motu Origins packaging, like the new for 20 up in the right-hand corner, as well as a burst saying, modern posing retro play. I love the use of the bright blue as the inner tray for inside the packaging. It helps contrast the figure really well inside that box, and it shows really nicely when you see it on a shelf. The back of the packaging features additional artwork, this time He-Man on Battle Cat, leaping towards Skeletor with Tila off in the distance in Castle Grayskull. This artwork reminds me of a favorite and iconic piece of artwork featuring Battle Cat leaping with battle armor He-Man riding his trusty green tiger. We get similar cross-sell artwork to the He-Man and Skeletor figures, but in addition, we do get cross-sell artwork for the Sky Sled Prince Adam 2-pack as well as this Battle Cat. We also get some frames that show that you can pose this battle cat in far more ways than the original. Taking this beast out of the box, I was actually shocked at how light this figure felt in hand. Compared to the He-Man and Skeletor figures, which actually felt really premium quality plastic in hand, this one feels a lot lighter. Now, I may just have vivid memories of the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat, which had a really hefty feel to it, uh, but this one just definitely feels lighter and not as the same level of quality that the He-Man and Skeletor figures have. I'll be curious to see how some of the other uh, humanoid figures are for the line, uh, but I love the, the quality and feel of the, the He-Man and Skeletor, so I hope uh, that is more of the same for this line, not so much the feel of this battle cat. This feline comes in taller than the original battle cat, which is in line with the figures as well, looking at about an inch taller that could also be attributed to that this figure stands more upright than the original. Uh, the original is just casted as one solid piece of plastic. This one has a lot more articulation with this cat receiving 12 points of articulation versus the zero of the original. But there is a huge miss opportunity with articulation. There is no articulating point at the paw which is huge in terms of the different poses that you can get this cat in. Without them, you're really only able to position this figure kind of standing upright. So you have eight articulating points between the four limbs, but they're basically rendered useless because you can't really do anything except having it in a standing position based upon the fixed position of the paws. Now again, I don't want to look a gift horse in the mouth when we compare to the original having no articulation at all, 
but I think fans would have been okay with a little bit of an extra price to be able to have those points of articulation, or maybe losing a point somewhere else to gain them in the ankles. The omission of ankle joints at the paws can almost be forgiven for all of the articulation we're given in the head with great neck movements, ball jointed head, as well as a hinged jaw. This allows for a great range of motion, a lot of different display options. I absolutely love everything about it. It's just a shame that a lot of that different posability and emotion that you could display with all of that articulation is again lost on the no articulating points at the pause. From a sculpting standpoint, there is a lot to love here, especially with the armor on. It looks great. It evokes the feel of the original while feeling updated at the same time. If there's any criticism, I can give it to the head of the battle cat being a little bit smaller. Maybe just the, the way the uh, fur of the, the face kind of flares out on the original. It's not really seen here as well as that artwork that it's showing on the packaging. The head just seems a little bit small to the rest of the body. Now, this could maybe be in more in line with what a real uh, tiger would look like. I'm, I'm not a tiger expert nor a tiger king, but... To me, the head without the helmet on seems a little bit small, where the original seemed kind of in scale, or at least felt more in scale, uh, as well as the Masters of the Universe Classics Battle Cat. So I don't know if they made the, the head of Battle Cat unmask a little bit smaller so the mask would fit properly, but even still, I wish it was a little bit bigger unmasked. Now, in general with my Battle Cats, I always have the mask on, so it's not that much of a problem for me, but for those that maybe wanna display this feline unmasked, I do think it's a little bit of a drawback to the unmasked head sculpt. The paint applications are slim on this figure with painted eyes on the helmet, as well as uh, painted teeth and uh, mouth, as well as the yellow tiger stripes and little paint apps on the Battle Cat's unmasked eyes. Your mileage might vary on the tiger stripes. On my example, it came across a little bit cheap with it not really fully applying to his shoulder areas, leaving some gaps that show green from the actual sculpt of the figure, the casted green of the sculpt of the figure, as well as, you know, I don't know, maybe this is unique to my vintage one, but my vintage Battle Cat had a lot more paint applications in the face, which I think made it stand out more. Don't get me wrong, I love the colors this figure is casted in. They're very bright compared to the original, so it really pops on a shelf, but I feel, I feel and wish we could have gotten a little bit more quality added to the paint applications here. I think it would have gone a long way to have the yellows really contrast against that bright green plastic that it's casted in. Battle Cat comes with two accessories and that is its red armor. I love the color choice here. It's a lot darker on a vintage. The Battle Cat from Motu Origins definitely evokes the feel of the Filmations cartoon with a lot more pop and a lot more color. I also like that certain appointments in the plastic is more polished compared to the matte look of other parts, most of it. So it really kind of adds, like it almost feels like a paint detail. Uh, but really, it's just the fact that some of the plastic is polished versus the rest of it being matte. And I think it adds a level of quality that makes this figure feel a little bit more premium. Going side by side to a vintage Battle Cat as well as a vintage He-Man riding that Battle Cat, along with the Motu Origins He-Man riding the new one, I think it's easy to see how well of a job they did with this Battle Cat. But unlike the He-Man and Skeletor figures, this updated Battle Cat is not without its flaws, especially when you're looking at it next to the vintage Battle Cat. The vintage one is sculpted in its almost kind of walking, stalking pose, and it's a shame that the lack of articulation at the paw joint makes it so that you cannot get the new Motu Origins Battle Cat in a similar pose to the vintage one. Not a deal breaker by any stretch, but when the line is touting that it's retro play with modern posing, I would hope that Battle Cat could get into some iconic poses, much like the new Skeletor and He-Man figures can, and I assume a lot of the figures from the new Motu Origins line. So it's a shame that the Battle Cat can't do the same things that the other fantastic figures have done so far from the Motu Origins line. 
at $24.99, this still will get the Geek Dad Life buy rating for me. Shortcomings aside, I still think it's a great toy and a great addition to this toy line. I think it's great that Mattel is going out of their way to really give us a lot of great figures for this first season and first wave of the toy line. I'm gonna hold out hope that we will get articulating paw points at some point, even though I'm pretty sure whenever they do come out with Panthor, it's gonna use the same tooling as this Battle Cat, but one can hope and dream. Definitely check out my other Motu Origins reviews. I have already done He-Man and Skeletor, and very soon I'll be reviewing Evil Lynn and Tila. So be sure to subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified when those reviews drop. We'll see you all next time. Hasta luego and goodbye.